Welcome! In this video, you'll learn how to set up and use advanced approvals in Salesforce Revenue Cloud. This setup is often completed by Salesforce administrators, sales managers, and revenue operations professionals. The standard Salesforce approval process works great for some businesses. Others have a more complex system with multiple approvals from various departments. Advanced approvals allows complex approval paths and provides a user-friendly system for sales reps. It provides flexibility and control over the approval process so that each quote, contract, or order is reviewed by the right people at the right time. With advanced approvals, you can develop complex hierarchies, run approvals in parallel, and make use of smart approvals to help you automate complex approval processes, reduce manual errors, and ensure faster deal closures. Now let's see how to set up an advanced approval process for a sample scenario. Imagine sales reps at your company need approval for discounts over 10%. You have one reviewer for 10%, another for 20%, another for 30%, and so on. That means that if a sales rep finalizes a deal with a customer, including a 25% discount, their deal needs a two-step approval from sales management because the discount is over 10% and 20%, but not over 30%. Your business also requires approval for non-standard payment terms and non-annual billing frequency. And sales ops needs to approve certain amount thresholds. Approval rules are the building blocks of any approval process. Let's look at how to set up one approval rule as part of this process. In this demo, we'll zoom in on building the approval rule for a 10% discount. First, we'll start on the approval rules tab, the central point of approval process setup. Here we can define the approval situation, order, recipient, email templates, and other key behaviors. This list contains all rules from the approval matrix. It includes rules based on discount amount, net amount, non-standard payment terms for small and large deals, and non-annual billing terms. Let's look at the details on the discount greater than 10% rule by clicking on it. The rule has a descriptive name for clarity in the preview approval screen or approval records. The rule must be active to trigger. Select the object for this approval process. For the opportunity object, advanced approvals is preset. For the quote object or others, set up the object for advanced approvals and add its API name to the target object field. Define the approval process step for this rule. This is step one, sent with the first round of approvals. Advanced approvals can send approvals to multiple people simultaneously. Use additional steps for dependent approvals. If part of a chain, Add that chain to the approval chain field. Chains and steps create sequential approvals. Separate chains can run in parallel. For instance, a sales management approval chain with steps one and two can run alongside a sales ops chain with its own steps. Step two in each chain is sent when step one is approved, regardless of the other chain's status. A step two not part of a chain depends on all step one's approvals. Let's look at the details of the sales management chain by clicking on it. Setting up a chain requires a name and target object. Add it to the approval chain field on the appropriate approval rules. By clicking on the related tab, we can see the related lists of an approval chain, which shows all the rules in that chain, such as the discount greater than 10% rule we were just looking at. We can click on it here to return to the discount greater than 10% details. Now we'll review approval conditions by clicking on the related tab. Approval conditions define what triggers a rule. Let's examine the setup by clicking on the approval condition seen here. The system auto-generates the condition name. The approval rule field auto-populates from the approval rules related list. Under tested information, we need to decide what to test. We specify the field to test on the target object in the tested field pick list. This could be a standard or custom field, or even a conditionally populated custom field. Instead of a field, we could test an approval variable, which aggregates information across child records related to the target object. After establishing the field or variable to test, we need to select what to compare it to in the filter type field. We then specify the operator. For a static value comparison, set the value in the filter value field. For a variable test, use the filter variable field. For a field value test, specify the API name in filter field. The Enable Smart Approval checkbox and Index field are for smart approvals. When enabled, an approval snapshot is created when the approval record is approved, acting as a benchmark for resubmissions. 
If the new approval record matches or improves on the benchmark, the approval is skipped. The index field is used for custom condition logic. This condition tests an approval variable, likely capturing the discount among the opportunity products. If the variable value is greater than 10, the condition is met and approval is needed. Let's jump to the approval variables window to learn more about them. Approval variables collect aggregated information about a child object of the target object on our approval rule. For this use case, we're summarizing information about the opportunity products. There are two types of approval variables, summary and discount. Let's look at summary approvals first by clicking on the opportunity product list total approval variable. First, name the variable. Select the type. This one is a summary. Specify the object and field to aggregate. We're aggregating information across the opportunity products. If the approval rule was looking at the quote, we could aggregate information across the quote lines. This approval variable aggregates a custom list price field on the opportunity product object. Define how the information will be aggregated using the aggregate function field. This approval variable collects the sum of the custom list price field across the opportunity products. The filter section restricts the approval variable to records that meet specific criteria. Define a field to filter on, either a standard or custom field. Set the operator. Define the value the filter will match on. The composite information section, under the header advanced, allows you to combine the results of this variable with another approval variable. List variable and net variable are used with a discount type approval variable. Now let's look at a discount type approval variable by navigating back to the approval variables page and clicking on opportunity product discount. This discount type approval variable is set up similarly to the one we just reviewed, but looks at the net price across opportunity products instead of the list price. It calculates a discount across child records using two summary type variables. Name the variable, set the type to discount, define the target object, in this case, the opportunity products. In the advanced section, select the variables summarizing the list price and net price in the list variable and net variable fields. This method allows flexibility in requiring approval for specific discounts. You can calculate the discount between contracted price and final net price by setting up the list variable to summarize the special price. The filter section can calculate the discount for specific product groups. If we jump back to our previous approval conditions windows, we can see that we're testing the discount approval variable, which uses two summary variables pointing to a custom list price field and a net price field. If the discount across the opportunity products exceeds 10, the condition is met and approval is needed. Now, let's dive deeper into the rule details by navigating back to the discount greater than 10% approval rule details page. The conditions section determines how our conditions interact and behave. With multiple conditions, the conditions met field decides their interaction. All conditions can be met with an AND operator or just one with an OR operator. For a combination, select custom. For custom, write the conditional logic in the advanced conditions field. Use the index number to reference a condition. The override field lets you specify a field on your rules target object, like the opportunity that overrides the rules conditions. A field on the opportunity can produce a true value under certain conditions, overriding the rules conditions. This feature treats conditions with smart approvals as separate conditions upon resubmission for approval. If enabled, a smart condition will trigger the rule if true, regardless of other conditions. After setting conditions and logic, decide the approver in the approver field. To add an approver, create an approval record. When creating an approval record, you should name the approver record generically, referencing a position, not a person. The approver can be a person or a public group. For a person, add the user to the user field. For a group, add the group ID. If the approver is a group, an approval record is created for the group. An email is sent to each group member, and any member can approve the record. If the unanimous checkbox is checked, all group members must approve the record. An approval record is created for each member. Below, you'll see delegated approver information. Users can set delegated approvers and specify delegation dates. These fields are specific to advanced approvals. Let's return to the discount greater than 10% approval rule for more details. 
After creating the approver record, add it to the approver field. Sometimes, the approver isn't easy to define. For instance, it could depend on the sales rep's manager or the customer's region. In such cases, use the approver field field. This field can contain the user ID of the approver, determined by a formula or a process builder or flow. The require explicit approval checkbox controls whether the approver needs to approve each record individually. If checked, the approver must explicitly approve each record generated by this rule. Now, let's set up the email templates for the approval process. Advanced approvals allows you to specify templates for approval request, approval, recall, and rejection notifications. These emails must be set up as VisualForce email templates. Let's quickly look at what an email template record looks like by clicking on Request Template. After creating your VisualForce email template, add its ID to this record and name it. It's now ready to be used by your approval rule. Let's return to the rule to discuss the different templates needed. The Request Template is the email sent to approvers when a request is created. The Approval Template is the email sent when a request is fully approved. The Recall Template is the email sent to approvers when a request is recalled. The rejection template is the email sent when a request is rejected. Request and recall emails always go to the specified approver. However, you can decide who receives approval and rejection emails in the approval recipients and rejection recipients fields. This could be the initial request submitter, the current record owner, or the original record creator. For additional recipients, use a workflow. You can set effective dates for when the rule applies. For example, you might not want a new rule to apply to deals created before the rule's implementation. First, decide which date from the target object to use. This could be the date the opportunity was created or submitted for approval. Then, specify the start and or end date. Both dates are inclusive. The excluded statuses field controls when re-evaluation runs. You can prevent it from running for opportunities that are pending approval, approved, recalled, or rejected. Finally, let's review tracked fields by navigating back to Related tab of the Discount Greater than 10% Approval Rule. Tracked fields monitor changes in fields throughout the approval process. A tracked field creates a tracked value record reflecting changes in the defined field. There needs to be a lookup field on your tracked value object that looks up to the opportunity or quote object. This associates the final tracked value record with the submitted opportunity or quote. Then, select the field and object you want to track. Specify how it should be tracked. All values creates a tracked value record each time an approval record is created. Any change creates a record for the initial submission, and then only if the field value changes for subsequent submissions. And that's it. We just saw how to set up an advanced approval process so that discounts over a certain amount can move smoothly through multiple levels of approvers. This one, just one example of how you can use advanced approvals to streamline and automate your own processes. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Simply search for the keywords, advanced approvals. Thanks for watching.